The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. My name is Shandy Hatfield, and I work here at Nature Sunshine's home office. We have got a fantastic presentation ready to go for you today. We are going to be talking about the microbiome approach to wellness. Um, it takes guts to be healthy. And we have one of our favorite presenters with us today. We have Dr. Jay Vandenhabel um, joining us from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, Dr. Jay has a doctorate in um, many different things, in integrative medicine, humanitarian services, integrative medicine. Um, he's a wealth of knowledge. He's a holistic health practitioner and um, also um, is certified in reflex reflexology. Um, we're just so glad to have you here today, Dr. Jay. Are you there? Yes. Good morning, Shandy. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Um, Good. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and turn the controls over to you, and we'll just um, dive right in because we've got a lot that we, we want to cover today. Right. So you should have control of that mouse now. Okay. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone out there in webinar land. How are you doing? Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy, busy schedules. I never met anybody who was not busy anymore. Uh, in this glorious summer. Some of you are hot, some of you are wet. Everybody's all over the place. It's an interesting summer. Anyway, thanks for taking the time. Uh, this is a presentation on a gut check on the, the microbiome. So we're going to start the presentation uh, basically sponsored through what's called Nature's Institute. You may have heard of this, naturesinstitute.com, which is a third-party organization. What that does is allow us to discuss uh, things of health matters and disorders. However, we do not discuss uh, particular products by name or companies by name. Uh, we will take a legal break later, do some questions and answers, make some announcements, and then we'll come back and kind of give you uh, some of that information that you're looking for. But this is all about the background. So when we talk about the microbiome, the home of the microbes, it all starts all the way back almost 3,000 years ago with Hippocrates. He was considered the father of medicine. And he had some quotes that you may have heard or maybe you have pinned up around your home or store. Let food be thy medicine, and thy medicines shall be thy food. We've heard that one. Nature itself is the best physician. Oh, I strongly agree. And the best part is after a lifetime of work, he concluded all disease begins in the gut. And you have to think about that for a second. 3,000 years ago, this man did not have a microscope. They did not understand sepsis, infection, pathogens, but yet through observation and historical and anecdotal work, he discovered that, you know, this is really what it's all about. And guess what we're finding out? After all that time, he was exactly right. This is one of my heroes, Dr. Patch Adams. You may remember the movie with Robin Williams, but the real Patch Adams. He had a quote that I absolutely love. When looking for solutions, don't see what everyone else sees, see what everyone chooses not to see. And boy, you can't find anything more apropos to what we're discussing than the microbiome, which is difficult to see, yet we know it exists. So as we were talking about Hippocrates, starting by saying all disease begins in the gut, we look at Patch Adams saying, choose to see what no one else sees. We'll take that concept just one step further before we get into the science and the research and the understanding of this. This is a concept that I want you to burn into your cerebrums, okay? I want everybody to remember this, teach this. After all, the word doctor means to teach. I want you to teach this to everybody you know because these concepts work with everyone because diet is personal. Food modification can be difficult especially when we're working with metabolic age support and we're doing many different types of things and helping the body correct imbalances. Use this analogy that food is information. And when I talk about food is information, I want to just briefly discuss that, you know, children make choices. Adults make decisions. So when we're offered choices, you know, a young child is saying, well, do you want an avocado or a donut? He's usually going to make the wrong choice. An adult has to stop and think. Well, if you start thinking every time you eat, 
every time you put something in your mouth, every time you drink something, and say, is this good information or bad information to my body, to my cells, to my biome, it starts making better decisions. The better decisions you make, the more success you will have in having optimum health. That's what's powerful. And at the end, we'll come back to that, and this will all tie together. You can uh, type in questions as we go. Um, hopefully some of them will be answered as we go through them, and we'll take time at the end to answer some of those questions. That being said, remember Hippocrates 3,000 years ago? He said all disease begins in the gut. Well, look at this little chart here, and what you see as far back as even 2000, how many studies were we doing on what's called the microbiome or the gut? Not a lot. And then you can see about 2007, oh, hmm, maybe there's something here. And then as we climb through all the way into 15, over 2000 studies have been done on this and growing. Well, I mean, if we had 2017 on here, it would probably be three times that amount. So this biome, this understanding, this hidden gem to choose to see what no one else sees is what's staring us in the face. We're starting to realize that the gut is the cornerstone of everything that we do. Recent research is just exploding. I'll give you an example. Just this week, I've gotten over three different scientific studies that came in that talked about how they're decreasing symptoms with probiotics using probiotics in the digestive tract. Symptoms of what? Allergies, being allergic to things. There was another study that came out that said adding probiotics, fixing the gut, increases your muscle integrity. So we get better muscle tone. I had a third study come out just this week that talked about it helps increase respiratory function. I mean, those are just three studies I got just this week. So what, what I'm trying to say is we are really in what we call the infancy or the beginning of understanding of what is the cornerstone or what is considered optimal health, right? Okay, sorry about that. And, and as Hippocrates said, all this disease begins here. Well, the health, and that's what we're interested in. I'm not concerned about a lot of diagnoses. I'm not concerned about prognosis. People come in and tell me they got all these symptoms. What I'm interested in is how do you get the body back in balance? How do you get the body to work like a fine-tuned machine? Well, the health starts where? It starts in that gut. Part of that gut, the intestines, is really the major home of the microbiome, right? Microbes home. Trillions, trillions and trillions of these bacteria which we cannot see. Over 6,000 individual species. Four to six pounds of our body weight. And so this little chart here, you don't have to memorize it, but you can see that what's going on in the stomach and the duodenum and the ileum, and jejunum, our colon, you know, where all these species reside, pick up shop. And that's what we call a symbiotic relationship. We need them, they need us. But keep in mind, they're at the mercy of whatever you decide to run through this system. They can't control you as much as you think. Now, when we talk about, well, where does this biome come from, right? Well, it really starts in pregnancy. And we now know, and again, so much of this being brand new information, this, this is 2014, is we now know that moms, their communities, their flora changes profoundly during pregnancy. The species change, the colonies change. Why? Because when baby is in utero, it's pretty much sterile. Baby's going to pick up bacteria coming through the birth canal. Baby's going to pick up bacteria from breastfeeding. And that's going to inoculate baby for life on Earth. And you may want to jot this down. Most people's microbiomes are kind of set or developed by the age of three. So we're at the mercy of whatever's handed down to us. Well, when we look at planet Earth and what is man has done to it, uh, you know, hey, there's a lot of antibiotics, right? There's a lot of uh, smoking and drinking and all kinds of things and environmental factors and stress and so many lifestyle things that can affect this microbiome that what we're passing on may be a big concern. Also, what's in the mother's milk, 
and how that baby was delivered, right? Whether that's C-section or by the birth canal. All these things influence what's happening to the child's microbiome for life. And that's a pretty powerful statement. So this inoculation in this slide is pretty powerful. You see the illustration of A and B. Now inoculation occurs during birth, right? So as baby's coming down the birth canal, baby is introduced to all this new microbes, which gets through the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and travels down in to the digestive tract and is on the skin and the hair. We got bugs crawling all over us, but they're they're good guys. Don't don't freak out. And so that has a lot to do with what happens to what we call metabolism. And our metabolism is our, our ability to create energy from food, which is information. You can see that bacteria present in the mother's birth canal and also the mother's milk will determine what happens to our offsprings. And when we start studying this and we look at these different microbial counts, colonies, what's being passed on, right? What types of bacteria are being passed on? We're starting to see a pattern. We're starting to see something that's very, very eye-opening. We're starting to see what no one else sees. That if mom, like in part B here, maybe is a little heavy set to begin with, maybe passing on bacteria that are more used to salt, sugar, and bad fat. And that's passed on to the offspring, which tends to result in a larger human. Isn't that interesting? Because here's something you didn't know. You never create more fat cells than what you're born with. They either get bigger or smaller. You don't make more. A lot of people say, well, I'm making too much fat. Nope. Guess what? You have a certain amount of fat cells from the day you're born. All they do is get bigger or smaller. What influences those cells to become bigger or smaller is the microbiome. We know that now. We do this through what's called fecal studies. Uh, we've done it with mice. We've done it with identical twins. And we have saw that when you um, translocate certain bacterias to healthy individuals, they may become obese. Or we could transfer obese to a thinner person, and the same thing happens. So it's a very powerful, eye-opening message. This slide kind of puts it all into shape. Okay, Here we're looking at what are this bacterial colony count that mom has given to baby. This is breastfed versus formula fed. So breastfed babies, there's a higher abundance, more diverse microbiota than formula fed. So take a minute here, put your glasses on. See these two charts? Here's one breastfed. Look at the different colors and the different percentages in certain bacteria. I'm going to have you pay attention to the purple and the blue. Bacteriodetes, notice in a breastfed situation, is about 20% of the population we pass on to baby. The bacteriodetes are more what we call plant-loving bacteria. They love plants. They like veggies. They like fiber. They like fermentated like sauerkraut. They love that stuff. Yet, the firmicutes in this situation is about 10%. They're more of, I like sugar, I like salt, I like bad food, I like junk food. Isn't that interesting? You need some of them. You don't want them wiped out. You need some of them. But this is a very good analogy. In, in proteobacteria are mixed species. So all these different species and some that are unsubclassified is because we haven't studied them yet. We don't know what they do. But the purple and the blue is what we're paying attention to. Now, what happens in a formula fed? What happened to your purple? It's gone. Well, we didn't pass on a lot of bacteriodetes here through formula feeding, did we? Well, we're not passing on a lot of what we call plant-loving bacteria. What we're passing on is a much higher percentage of something called firmicutes. And these are salt, sugar, bad fat-loving bacteria. What do you think that's going to do to someone's metabolism over a lifetime from the get-go? And we could stop right there, and I think you got the idea. Now, the microbiome itself isn't just guts. It's all over the place, right? It's everywhere. It's, it's in our nose and our mouth, and it's on our skin, and you can see all the different parts of our body that contain various forms of bacteria. So it's kind of interesting. So a little um, thing that I do with people is have them shake hands, right? Use your left hand if you're sitting with somebody right now. 
just take your left hand and shake their left hand. And by doing that, you give them one-sixth of your entire biome. Here, this is yours. Take care of it. And vice versa. So isn't that interesting? So we're exchanging bacteria all the time. So is the dog. So is the cat. So is everything else in our life. Soils, all kinds of things are affecting these biomes, hopefully in a positive direction. Remember back we were talking about Dr. Patch Adams. He said, choose to see what no one else sees. Well, here's some brand new information that, again, has only come out in the last 10 years. A lot of this has come through what's called the Human Microbiome Project. You got an extra half hour and you don't know what to do with it? Google it. The Human Microbiome Project. You'll spend hours on that thing. You'll bookmark a lot of different things and you'll really understand the power of the biome. So what no one else sees, that the brain and the gut, the brain and the gut, if you look at this little picture down here on the right, the gut and the brain are basically made from the same tissue. We call this the enteric nervous system. Enteric means the intestine. And the other, the central nervous system, or the brain and spinal cord. And yet they're from the same tissue. We now know that there's a bi-directional communication, that the gut talks to the brain, the brain talks to the gut. Everything's connected. Isn't that interesting? We should not be compartmentalizing everything when we're trying to tackle health, right? Symptoms don't always point us to where the problem is. So it's more than a gut feeling. The gut really becomes what we call the second brain. It talks to the brain. It sends signals. It sends what's called postbiotic metabolites. Postbiotic metabolites. Basically sending signals to the brain. Well, if your guts are a mess, let's say they're all disrupted, you've got a bad biome, you're not treating it well, you're not paying attention to it, you're abusing it, what's going to happen to the brain? That's how we have to start thinking. That food is information. But let's look at that connection. What's going to happen to the brain? Well, studies show us the gut microbiome can have a significant influence on psychosis, on mood, behavior. This all happens through communication, uh, through the nervous system, even uh, what's called the vagus nerve or cranial nerve 10. There's connection between the gut and the brain or the hypothalamary pituitary adrenal access. Uh, you don't need to remember that. What you need to remember is that what affects the gut affects the brain and vice versa. So research indicates exposure to stressful events. Anybody got stress? I'm sure a lot of you do can change your microbiome. Well, if you change the microbiome, are you changing the brain? Now, that's not the cause of everything, but what a powerful connection that if we want healthier brain function, spinal function, doesn't it make sense if we have a healthier gut, we do the same thing? And we're finding that this gut biome affects everything. Hippocrates was right that everything happens in the gut. It affects your skin. And as I mentioned, a recent research paper, your respiratory system, your structural system, your immune system, your cardiovascular system, your nervous system, there is nothing that is not influenced by the gut. So the brain-gut connection is just one more powerful idea. So these digestive gut bacteria and this microbiome, what do they do? Well, they play cr crucial roles in digesting our food. Yeah, that's powerful. I could talk about that for an hour and not bore you, uh, how powerful those bacteria are in digesting food. Remember that they digest food. So that means things like we're seeing studies coming out now that talk about ginseng. And the, the recent study that I read said one in five people on planet Earth cannot feel the effects of ginseng because they don't have the bacteria to break the ginseng down into what's called ginsenocytes. In other words, somebody may take a good quality ginseng and say, well, I didn't feel anything. Well, it, it might be because they don't have the bacteria to digest it. Isn't that interesting? So we're starting to find out, even herbology-wise, that the herbs become more powerful, more potent when we have the right microbes. That's pretty cool. I'd put that in a newsletter. I'd tell everybody you know about that, that if we improve your gut, we improve the efficacy of the herbs we're using. Food is information. It also says modulates the immune system. Yeah, that can be 70 to 80% of your entire immune system. You got immune problems? 
gee, I wonder where you should start. They defend us against foreign invaders and pathogens, right? I call it, there's no room at the inn. The more good guys you have in your guts, the less room there is for the bad guys. They come in here, hey, it's too crowded with good guys, I'm not living here. That's just a simple analogy. And then even in this realm, which I mentioned once already, postbiotics, which is a whole new emerging science. Bacteria make molecules. They make molecules, right, from their foods and their, and their metabolism and their byproducts. And, and that helps everything to work better, even enzymes. But those molecules can even signal the body and the brain. And what's most important, your metabolism. Metabolism is important because if it's too sluggish, you can eat a cracker and gain 10 pounds, right? But if it's speeded up, it's working well, you got good energy, you're feeling great. I can't tell you how many times people have said to me, God, I wish I had more energy, right? They interact with us. They influence our gene expression in something called epigenetics. Don't let this overwhelm you. Just get the gist of everything so you can explain it to people. I use this presentation with customers in my office all the time and go, here, let me show you what this is doing. And believe me, they have no problem using the things that I recommend once I show them why. Epigenetics just really means this. Your genes can predispose us to problems, right? Cancer, heart disease, diabetes, Parkinson's, whatever, may run in your family. That doesn't mean you're going to get it. But epigenetics means it influences the gene to express itself. So your genes are kind of like a gun, right? Epigenetics is the trigger. What is epigenetics? Well, basically it tells the gene to turn itself on or off. So if we know that bacteria are making molecules that can influence our epigenetics, if we got bad guts, is this turning on bad genes? Well, the science is starting to say, yeah, that's incredible information. We, again, we are at the infancy of understanding the biome, but we are opening a whole new chapter into natural health. Now, dysbiosis, dysbiosis means difficult biome or things are out of balance. Dysbacteriosis is another clue. It just means that you don't have a good biome to start with. Maybe you didn't get one from the get-go. Maybe you changed it throughout your lifetime because you were drinking and smoking and not coming home at all. You were being naughty. You were putting the wrong food, the wrong information in here. Research suggests that this dysbiosis in our gut can also then, because of those molecules, follow our nerves right up to our brain. And we see that a lot of this is happening with depression and even anxiety. A lot of people have unexplained anxiety, unexplained depression. And yet we look at this and say, well, scientifically, this is a lack of serotonin in depression. Serotonin is a hormone that makes us feel good. Well, guess where 90% of your serotonin is made? Right here in the gut by the bacteria not in the head. So if you've got low serotonin levels and the doctor says, well, we got low serotonin levels, we're going to put you on a medication uh, to uptake that or reuptake that. Um, the problem's down here, not upstairs. You know, that's part of it. Now, is that the only thing that causes depression? No. Is that the only thing that causes anxiety? No. But we're finding out that it has a powerful influence. And believe me, all of you listening, whether you're new or old, you have found that when you work on the gut, a lot of things get better. So how do we get messed up? How do we end up with this gut dysbiosis? How do we get so screwed up to begin with? Well, it's pretty much common sense. This ain't rocket science. Too much alcohol, antibiotics, inappropriate diet, right? We now know and can prove it's been implicated in cardiovascular disease. Fungal bacteria overload, right? A lot of you understand candidiasis and different things like that, yeast infections. Irritable bowel syndrome. Gee, something's irritating the bowel. I wonder what it is. Colitis, inflammation of the colon. You know, is that coming from, you know, what? Well, could it be that our bacteria are out of whack and they're making molecules that are irritating the bowel, causing inflammation, now sending signals to the brain, to the cardiovascular system, even metabolism, which can get us into obesity? It's implicated in diabetes. It's implicated in what we call cardiometabolic syndrome. And you're going to hear about that more and more and more and more. Why? Because by the year 2050, 
it will affect two out of every three Americans. Cardio, metabolic syndrome, and there's a whole host of what's happening there. Whole big pile of things like elevated fasting glucose, high blood pressure, our lipids are all screwed up, even polycystic ovarian syndrome, obesity is the biggest significant factor, which, let's face it, causes all kinds of problems. Bottom line, metabolic syndrome simply is a lifestyle disorder. Can you change your lifestyle? Of course, you need a new plan, right? So metabolic syndrome increases the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Again, that can be as high as two out of three people. Uh, cardiovascular complications, $3.5 trillion trying to tackle all of this. So sometimes we go in and we have abnormal labs, we've got high blood pressure, we've got insulin resistance, we've got all these things going on, and they say, well, we'll give you a medication for this, we'll give you a medication for that, we'll give you a medication for this, medication for that. Wait a minute, where's this all coming from? I think you're starting to make the connection. So when we talk about metabolic syndrome, right today in 2009, one and three, and as I just told you, by 2050, two out of three. What about skinny people? Can they end up with metabolic syndrome? Well, the answer is yes. According to the Journal of American Medical Association in 2012, one in four are already pre-diabetic, even though they don't look it. Internally, they may have visceral fats, poor biomes that are affecting what's happening to them. And where they're headed doesn't look so good, right? And those numbers continue to climb. It won't be long, it'll be one in three skinny people, one in two. If people keep disrespecting their biomes, the science says this is where we're headed. So I want to explain how that happens. And if you've heard this presentation before and this is the second or third time, good for you. Because the more you hear it, the more you understand it, the easier it is for you to explain. You're going to sound like a walking encyclopedia and people are going to change their lives when they start listening to what you're saying. Metabolic endotoxemia. Our metabolism is becoming toxic from our intestines. That's what that word says. Now this occurs when endotoxins or intestinal toxins in the blood are two to three times more than what they should be. So if we bottom up here, down here in the bottom you see the epithelium, these are single cells, right? There's permeability in the intestines, we're going to talk about that in a minute. And these toxins start getting into the muscles, they get into the fat cells and they grow bigger and then they attack the liver and then of course they can even attack the brain. So we have this whole altered composition, we've got all these problems that are happening. What is this endotoxemia? These are toxins to the body. It's amazing how many times I've put people on cleanses and they said, oh, I feel so much better, I've got more energy, I'm feeling better, I lost weight, I, I'm just, wow, great. Six months later, they're back going, well, now I'm right back where I started. You know, what happened? Well, you didn't fix the problem. You helped clean them out, they felt the effects, but you didn't fix the issue. What is this issue? Well, bacteria, they metabolize like we do. They cough and they pee and they excrete and they do everything we do. They sweat and their toxins usually are contained within the bowel. But if that bowel is degrading, it's tearing down, it's deteriorating, all of that stuff starts to leak into the bloodstream. So our gut lining is compromised. And you can see from the picture that, oh yeah, we'll just keep eating this, you know, what the firmicutes love. And also we start putting all, all kinds of toxins, it starts chewing away at the interior lining of our intestines. And then things start leaking into the system. And then the immune system says, hey, where are all these toxins coming from? I don't know, but we've got to take care of it. Boom, there's inflammation. And now that's attacking everything. And now we ache and we hurt and we're getting big and we've got high blood pressure, we've got this, we've got that, we've got all these problems, right? It's all affecting everything. Now what you see up here under endotoxemia are just two of the possible postbiotic chemical molecules that we're concerned with. This one, being LPS, is lipopolysaccharide. You don't have to write it down and remember it. However, guess what? You can have a simple blood test, and it'll tell you if your LPS levels are normal or too high. If they're too high, you're leaking. It's that simple. You're leaking waste products right into your bloodstream through the intestines. Oops, don't want that. 
Zonulin is usually indicated when there's a gluten problem. Celiac, SPRU, gluten sensitivity. It's estimated that 70 million Americans are gluten sensitive and don't even know it. So you can test for that. What would that tell you? Well, you got to stop gluten. Yeah, you can stop gluten. That'll help. It'll lower your levels of zonulin. But you don't understand how it got there in the first place. It was because of this gut barrier impairment. That's powerful. That's worth the price of admission. This results in all kinds of things. Insulin resistance, our mood changes. We have muscle pain. I've seen this in so many different conditions. It can be implicated in so many autoimmune problems, fibromyalgia. I could do this all day. Hippocrates was right. All disease begins in the gut. Let's explain this a little bit. So here, up here, is a small picture of an intestine. And you can see that we're looking at this little box here. And we're going to blow this up so that you see these epithelial cells. These little tiny fingers up on top are called villi. So as food is passing across your intestines inside this tube, passing across the top of these little villi, like fingers, like straws, they're sucking in nutrients. But there's also bacteria here. And if they're making too many waste products, we got the wrong kind of foods, we're not helping the system. These linings of these epithelial junctions start to deteriorate. Then these particles, waste products, and even bacteria slip through right into the bloodstream. Oops, now we're endotoxic. This is going to affect so many things. Gee, no wonder the immune system gets angry. No wonder we have blood pressure and we've got all these different issues. Is it the cause of everything? No. But is it implicated in these things? Absolutely. So we get this overload. We call it systemic overload. It's because the intestines are permeable. You don't want that. This picture you're looking at, that lining of that intestine is only a millimeter thick. Okay, so the thinner it gets, the worse it gets. And we have this leaky gut. And then these bacterial toxins, which are not supposed to be in our system, are suddenly there. And then those toxins also kind of continue to keep degrading what's happening to the intestine. And things get worse and worse and worse. What can it lead to? Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is just one idea. And this is one of the fastest growing diagnosed problems in the U.S. today. It ranges 17 to 30% of the population, and that's going to grow. In obese people, they find it 75% of the time. And it can progress from normal to fatty to even something as bad as cirrhosis or even the big C. Animals and humans found a relationship between this gut microbiota and what's happening to the liver. So we don't want these toxins circulating through the system all the time, or we're going to start running into these kinds of problems. So our microbiota and fecal transplants, I talked about that in the very beginning. But here in Amsterdam, they were working with obese patients and found that insulin response time doubled in just six weeks after fecal transplants. I don't know about you, I'm not up for fecal transplants. I would rather fix this naturally. But what it really tells us is that, hey, we could take fecal matter from someone who's healthy, put it in someone who's unhealthy, and in just six weeks we see a huge change. Well, what did we introduce? Better bacteria. What they don't tell you is does that fix the problem? What if that intestine's leaking? What if you don't change the diet? What if you don't fix what's going on? Well, you're never going to completely heal the problem. Please keep that in mind. That's the crux of what we're talking about. And I often quote this from Harvard University. Okay, They showed that diet, along with a gastric bypass, which is a very invasive surgery and very risky, does encourage shifts in the microbiota. Why? Because it decreases those firm cuties that we talked about in the very beginning. They love sugar. And it increases the plant lovers, the bacterial DDs. Okay. So the surgery and diet made a difference. But here's what is really powerful. They then went on to say, shifting the gut bacteria with your diet to an abundance of beneficial bacteria does the same thing. Why isn't that on a billboard? Shouldn't we be talking about that in bariatrics? Yeah, we should be. So that's a powerful, powerful slide. Norigenes. This is just to let you know that your bacteria are very smart 
inside your body. They talk to each other. There's a whole community going on. They do something called horizontal gene transfer. In other words, if you and I move to Japan and live on the coast next month and we decide to live there the rest of our lives, our diet's going to drastically change. We're going to start eating more seaweed. Well, guess what? We may be from the Midwest or whatever, and we're living on corn and wheat, and you know we've got we're not eating seaweed. Our bacteria don't know how to break that down, so they found out that your microbiota basically shares genes with each other to learn about new diets, so that the bacteria can break down your food. Now you've heard this adage, right? From birth to adulthood, you are what we eat. Yeah, and that's true. But by looking at these nori genes in the Japanese gut microbiota. We started finding out, you know, it's not always what we eat. Sometimes it's what we absorb, and that's crucial, right? A lot of us use enzymes and things like that to help our body absorb nutrients. It's pretty powerful. But what I want you to think about going forward is adding this. We are what our microbes eat. So, again, those nori genes only show up when you change the diet. That's just horizontal gene transfer. So I often teach this concept to many people. Hey, you are what you eat. You know, you had a decision to make between a donut and an avocado. You are what you eat. And you are what you absorb. But you are what your microbes eat. So those microbes are only, like Harvard showed us, at the mercy of what you decide to consume. It's that powerful. All right. Let's put this into simple, understandable analogy. Okay, the three R's is what I use. That's a functional medicine concept. And I kind of came up with this analogy in the shower. I think sometimes that's where God talks to me because I finally stopped doing something and listen. But I had this vision of how do you explain the gut microbiome to people easy enough for them to understand. I want you to think of your digestive system as a fish tank. It's self-enclosed. You don't want this fish tank to leak. You gotta have the right water, the right pH. The fish represent your probiotics. You want them healthy, you don't want them sick. So, people that are having all kinds of digestive problems, metabolic problems, probably have a bad fish tank. So, using that analogy helps people to understand what we're going to do. So, if we can use diet and certain supplements and products in the right way, what we can do is we can remove some of those toxins, change the water, change the environment, remove the endotoxins, stop putting things in that influence a poor fish tank. We can repair the fish tank. We don't want it to leak. And then we can replenish the fish tank with good fish. So I just want to stop here for a second. A lot of people are out there going, Oh, just take probiotics, everything will change, you'll feel better. Wrong. They need to listen to what I'm saying, okay? They need to listen to the science of what's happening here. The analogy I use is, I'm going to back up for a second. Look at this fish tank. If I go buy expensive tropical fish, let's say each fish costs 30 bucks a pop, and I buy 10 and I throw them in here, what will happen to the fish? I rest my case. So we have to be thinking about how do we remove some garbage, how do we repair that fish tank so that when we put new fish back in, we get the right balance. So the first thing we do is remove. Common sense. You guys probably all know this. You need to eliminate things that affect that, right? You don't want to have chemicals and pollutants and too much waste material the wrong kind of food, too much food, the wrong kind of beverages, right? Phosphoric acid, carbonic acid, you know, that doesn't belong in there. Things that promote inflammatory processes or even the wrong kind of bacteria. And there's all kinds of things in our lifestyle that affect that. Second, we need to repair. We don't want a leaky fish tank. So we have to provide nutritional support that supports good fish and heals the gut. You can do that vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, essential fatty acids, amino acids like L-glutamine, powerful stuff. And of course, plants. Remember, Bacteriodides loves plants. Firmicutes loves sugar. So I often teach people when they say, Dr. J, what's, what's the best diet? 
plants fiber fermentation. Yeah, but what about tropical fruit and what about this and what about an artichoke and what? Yeah, plants fiber fermentation, right? Don't need to write a book. Don't need to have a bestseller on what's the best diet, you know, ketoacidosis, caveman, Mediterranean, whatever. They're all good, but only if they really work with the biome. And what is that? We've got to have more plants. We've got to have a really good source of fiber. And I like fermentation as well. So these help us. Let me explain a little bit about this. First, something called lectins. Lectins are in everything that we're eating. We discovered lectins a long time ago in the 1800s, and we started to understand that they interact with sugar and they interact with protein. Lectins are found in everything, throughout the plant kingdom, throughout everything. They're valuable, sometimes scary, because that's how we figured out uh, biological warfare, like ricin, and even studies of cell death. Foods with high concentrations of lectins, you know, where do we find the most lectins, which can be detrimental to the fish tank? Well, we find those in cereal grains. That's one of the uh, high points. They're also harmful if we consume them, too many of them, improperly cooked foods, right? Too much cereal grains. Uh, it kind of rips everything apart. Gee, I wonder why you get high zonulin and celiac. Affects the immune system, nutrient deficiencies, it degrades the fish tank, all of that, right? Now, you can't get away from them. Lectins exist in nature for a reason to deter predators from eating too many plants. But luckily, we have things that we can consume called polyphenols, which counteract that, repair, stop. It depends on the gut health. That's what we know now, that, okay, if we just swallow a whole bunch of polyphenols, we're going to be all better. No, not true. Common sense would tell you, reduce the amount of lectins you're eating, eat more plants, fiber fermentation, and of course, a lot of polyphenols. That helps, but you also need to have the fish or the probiotics to break them down. What are these polyphenols? Well, they're flavonoids, vitamin Cs, antioxidants, right? And they counteract the lectins. They help repair the lining. Uh, ginkgo biloba is, is currently in the research here is that they found out that it's hard for people to get the benefits from ginkgo biloba if they don't have the right species or right fish in the fish tank. So most of these polyphenols are poorly absorbed. Remember, you are what you absorb, you are what your microbes eat. Good news, the microbiome, good bacteria, can break down plants and fiber so that we can extract the stuff that keeps us healthy, which also can even affect the health of the brain. In other words, we may not be able to digest the ginkgo biloba directly, but our microbes can, and they must be in balance for that to happen. All right, plant-based diets, right? If we can get people to understand, you're going to have to do more of this. Diets primarily plant-based have a greater diversity of healthful bacteria. In other words, that's herbal therapy, that's phytotherapy. Right? I've been doing herbs with people for 25 years, and I've seen miraculous results. And a lot of times, I can't explain it. Well, I think this is part of it. Protein is also found in plant foods. I never met anybody who was protein deficient, by the way. Our body, with the microbes, takes these plants and the protein from the plants and the polyphenols from the plants to assist our body. So without the microbes, we'd be in a world of hurt. They also ferment a lot of these foods. Why is fermentation important? Because it helps the bacteria break things into usable compounds to feed the baby bacteria. You want to kill the nursery? Stop eating plants and fiber. So we know that fermentation, either the natural process or using this in food preparation, supports the right type of population. Certain plants have a lot of amino acids like L-glutamine which is a major fuel source for the intestinal cells. Sometimes when people got really bad fish tanks, I'll even recommend the supplement, L-glutamine on an empty stomach. But legumes, proteins, or what's called pulses, are a rich source of this glutamine. And that helps repair those faulty junctions I showed you before. That's important, is making sure that we're getting that in on a daily basis. So plants are one thing, fiber being another one. We call fibers prebiotic or even postbiotic, and foods high in fiber have a huge impact on this whole microcosm of what we're dealing. Helps with what's called our composition. But if we get higher amounts of fiber, we know that 
that lowers cholesterols and helps us reduce colon cancers, but it has also been shown to improve the gut barrier, help us with insulin sensitivity so we don't end up in these metabolic syndromes, and our lipid profiles get better. We've also studied fibers. They've been vastly studied as to what are the best. Well, one of the best ones is chicory root or inulin, which comes from chicory root, also Jerusalem artichoke being another one. And our microbes actually ferment them, as I mentioned before, and digest what you can. They break them into what's called short-chain fatty acids. Back to where I started. Food is information. Based on everything I just talked about, when you're making that decision, not a choice, ask yourself this question. Which one is a better plant source? Which one has better fiber and or fermented? Well, the obvious one is avocado. It's a better plant source, a better fiber source. Now, neither, is, neither of these may be fermented, but you get the idea. If I had a picture of sauerkraut in the donut, would it be a plant? Would it be fiber? Would it be fermented? Well, yeah. Okay. It's all about decisions, and it's information. Which one is going to create a healthy biome? Which one is not? So I call this fish food, right? Plants fiber fermentation. But organic apple cider vinegar, gee, it's fermented. I just put that in there to let you know there was a recent study showing that it actually helps lower our blood glucose in the morning. And now, guess what? You know why. So it's best at night. Sauerkraut, kimchi, kvass, miso, kombucha, all kinds of tubers, right? Hopefully they're non-pasteurized, right? I, I do make my own sauerkrauts and kimchis, and uh, a lot of people make their own kombucha. Because um, if you're pasteurizing, you're killing it. Kefir is actually a better source of a fermented dairy if you're dairy tolerant. And actually, according to the University of Wisconsin-Madison, seven times longer effect than yogurt for gut health. So that might be a helpful little tidbit. Again, you got to ask this when you're making a choice. Is this a plant? Does it contain fiber? And or is it fermented? That's how you eat. What's the best diet? I don't care. You're going out to the grocery store? Use this analogy. You go into a restaurant? Use this analogy. As long as it meets those criteria, it's a good choice. That doesn't mean we don't eat good fats like coconut oil or olive oil. It doesn't mean that we're not looking at good protein sources other than plants like fish. You get the idea. But you can see why plant-based protein shakes make a lot of sense and really help people turn around what's happening to them very quickly. Um, you know, Pretty much everybody that comes in here, I'm talking to them about this. You may want to get on some plant-based shakes because I know you don't always eat the best. Have you ever met anyone that's walked in your office and said, hi, I eat terrible, help me? No, they all say, oh, I eat good, until you ask them, well, tell me what you ate in the last 24 hours. Very few plants, very limited fiber, and sometimes not any fermentation. Prebiotics, non-digestible fibers, are fermented in our GI tract, make things like fructooligosaccharides, and those are beneficial to the probiotics. Guar gums, inulins, these are all really, really good fish foods. They really make a huge difference. Let me show you what I mean here. Chicory root, remember I said this is one of the ones that's been studied. It's shown improvement in blood glucose, weight gain, fat mass, and metabolic endotoxemia, the really nasty kind. Here's a little chart to show you how powerful chicory root is. Look at the amounts of fructooligosaccharides, which is fish food, almost 23 grams out of 100. Inulin, look at the grams out of 100, 42 grams of 100 grams is, is, is fiber. Jerusalem artichoke being number two. Dandelions, gee, I wonder why we use the dandelion herb or eat dandelions. You know, go right on down, see a lot of herbs in here as well. Uh, so this gives you an idea of how powerful inulin can be, and what if we put that in a supplement and you were getting that on a daily basis? Wow, you're really going to turn things around. Well, I hope you guys are liking this. Hang in there. Last, replenish. We need to restore a healthy balance of beneficial bacteria. We need to re-inoculate, put the good guys in there. What's important in supplementation is quality and safety. Not how many different strains and not counts. That comes from the International Probiotics Association. So I have people come in and go, hey, I found this antibiotic at the store, and it's got 50 billion, gazillion, trillion, billion per capsule. I'm like, I don't care. It's got nothing to do with the count. Quality and safety is more important. And are you putting this in a desirable fish tank? That's how you got to start talking to people. 
So beneficial probiotics are, of course, going to help maintain a good community. They're going to stop pathogens. And there are a lot of studies to show that they help actually repair the digestive lining. Studies show that they reduce these endotoxin levels. You know, what kind of fish you want to put in there? Good guys, happy, smiley fish, right? That's what we want. We want a fish tank that's beautiful. We want fish that are happy because when that happens, our brain is happening. So probiotics are pretty popular. They're the highest selling ingredient in the U.S. natural channel. And they're the fastest growing supplement in North America. But again, there's a lot of people that are taking these willy-nilly, you know, recommending them at first, you know, go without thinking about removing and repairing. They're just throwing them in there. And a lot of people say, oh, I took these probiotics. I got such an upset stomach. Well, yeah, you got a civil war going on. You also see it being shown in skin care and shampoos. I don't give any credibility to that. There's no science to show that that works. But it does work through the digestive tract. So quality and safety is critical, not your colony counts. Bigger is not better, right? Make sure they're NSF, GMP, right? You've got testing, these kinds of things. Make sure your supply is an excellent probiotic. That's the right kind of fish to put in there. You gotta love these probiotics. They maintain that biome. They help us get polyphenols. They help us deter lectins. They help the immune system, respiratory, the skin, metabolism, the vascular system, blood pressure, inflammation, brain blood flow, and look at blueberries. Evidence suggests to provide polyphenols, it reduces toxic exposure to the brain. Even green tea, shown to reduce damage in neural tissues and increases glutathione, which is the most powerful antioxidant in the human body, all because of probiotics. So we're starting to understand something completely different. How does that parlay into this big issue, the biggest problem facing America, cardiometabolic disorders? Well, we know. Cholesterol-lowering potential probiotics, widely studied. This is no longer a myth or a theory, it's a fact. Fermented vegetables, prebiotic foods, right? We talked about inulin, different things. Well, they help with your blood pressure, heart rate, cholesterol, your weight, toxins. Look at a new study from Nutrients here. I put this one in recently, lactobacillus rhamnosus. May have greater appetite control, greater fasting fullness, and cognitive restraint, emotion-related behaviors. It's a true gut-brain axis in obesity management. That's pretty powerful stuff. So, you know, we've got to choose wisely, like Dr. Patch Adams said. See what no one else sees. Is this the kind of fish tank you're dealing with? Is this the kind of fish tank that everybody's walking into your practice, into your store, asking you for help with? Most likely, yes. And what we want to do is help them through the right kind of diet, the right kind of supplements, to end up with a fish tank and it's just absolutely gorgeous and the fish are happy, everything's happy, your brain's happy, you're happy and long may you live. It's phenomenal. Thanks so much for letting me yak at you today and we'll turn it over, some questions and answers. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Jay. That was an awesome presentation and um, I've, I've seen this presentation before but I, I learned new things this time. I think it does take some time for all of that to sink in but it's, it's really an important um, message for us to understand. So thank you. Um, we do have some questions that have come in. Um, let's just take one or two and then we'll um, finish up the presentation since we're a little bit short on time. Um, this question comes from Myra. She says, do you need to do a cleanse before you start taking probiotics? Right. So remember the three R's, Myra. Remove, repair, replenish. So sometimes um, let's say I was going to do, and now I'm going to put on my Nature Sunshine hat, right? So let's say I was going to do an informed program with someone, and, and, and you need to talk to them. You need to get their history. And maybe they're very toxic. Their bowels are sluggish. They've got some overweight. Yeah, cleansing is the first place to start. So, yeah, start with a good cleanse before you start doing the other things. And in some situations, you can kind of do all three at the same time. So the answer is yes. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, all right, uh, an another question from Rose. If you can just remind us, what was the name of the test um, that can help you determine if you have leaky gut? Right. The test you mentioned. Right. As I uh, said in the very beginning, we are in the infancy of understanding the microbiome. A test like LPS, lipopolysaccharide, or zonulin are tests that can be done through the blood today. 
they're often not done unless asked or maybe you have a gastroenterologist who's looking for this endotoxin. So LPS tells us that, yeah, I've got endotoxins, I'm probably leaking. Zonulin tells us the same thing, that the guts are leaking probably from gluten. So LPS and zonulin are the two blood tests that are done today. But again, they're not routinely done, probably because there's no medication for it. Okay. All right, great, thank you. Um, okay, so to a lot of people asked if we were going to put um, make the slides available, so I just uploaded those now. So if you want to download those from your panel, you can. Yay! Do so. Um, so those are up, and then we will make a, um, a recording available as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, let's go ahead, since we're about out of time, let's let you um, kind of get to your next little part, and then if we have any additional time, we'll answer some more questions. Yeah, if, if some people want to hang on after the time allotment, I can answer a few more questions. So okay. thank you so much for those questions, everybody. Um, I would recommend that you download those slides. They're on your little uh, drop-down um, panel on your right there. You can download those in a PDF and show those to people and have that discussion. Use them in your herbal hours. Very, very important um, because that's how you get people to understand what it is you're recommending. All right. Let's talk about how do you fix this wagon? So how can we remove, how can we repair, how can we replenish? Well, guess what? We've put it all together in one easy to use kit. It's that simple. We call it the informed metabolic age support. But why? Because it 100% clinically studied focuses on this gut health problem. It targets everything I just talked about. How can that not have a positive influence on you? And it's also part of that positive lifestyle change. Right? We're, we're educating people on what are the right foods, what are the right fish foods for the fish tank. But what I have often found in my practice for 25 years is I can tell people about diet, but they don't always go out and do it. Right, And then some people say, well, I'll just change it with my diet. Well, studies show that that doesn't always work. It works for a little while, but then you kind of plateau. Some people say, well, I'll just do supplements. And same kind of thing. What we have found out in clinical studies with this particular kit, is that it, it has a synergy effect. You're not only changing the diet, but you're changing the supplements and then changing the gut, is that it's just going off the charts on how fast this works. Why? Because it's working with that biome. So it works on that metabolic age, how fast we're aging. It works on our cardiovascular system, and a good side benefit for some people is weight loss. But remember, you know, when I talk about this, the words that come out of my mouth are clinically studied because there is no other program I know of out there anywhere. And I don't have to name names, you know what they are. They're on TV, they're on ads, they're on billboards all the time. Are they clinically studied? No, this one is. So what we're saying is, hey, we've run this through studies. We know it works. And that's unlike anything else on the market. And that's very powerful. So if you're kind of new to this or you've already been into it, that's the way you gotta talk to people. And we can include a coach, somebody can help you every step of the way. We have group support because people like being part of a group. Or you can do it individually. We also use something called a bio tracker, which is not a scale. It measures 10 different things like visceral fat, hydration, bone density, uh, your metabolic age. And again, clinically tested. Um, very easy to use, this whole thing. I mentioned in the previous presentation about how many things the biome affects. This one just shows you very quickly, and I, and I show a lot of people this slide. If there's one slide, you want to show everybody, it's this one, that the microbiome focuses on all these different things. You got neurological problems? Yes, I do. Well, let's work on the gut. You got weight problems? Yeah, well, let's work on the gut. You got immune problem? Yeah, let's work on the gut. This is very, very simple to show people this, that all of these systems of ourselves are affected positively by working with this system. It is about the products. These were developed through the Hughes Center for Research and Innovation. I'm so thankful that Nature Sunshine has this research center with credible people and highly credentialed people working for the interest of us. Again, we have clinical studies to show that it works, and you've probably seen a lot of those. Why do they work? Because it works on the gut, and there we're reducing metabolic endotoxins. We're improving everything in the human form. The results are just fantastic. They speak for themselves. Here's another slide that you should show people. At the end of 90 days, those in the clinical study that did the informed products and the diet, 12% reduction in body weight, 
almost 22% reduction in fat mass. That's fantastic. Your body is fueling up, powering up here. You're burning fat, not sugar. 51% reduction in triglycerides. I mean, when doctors see this, their eyes pop out. Look at what's happening to blood pressures, total cholesterols, and the bad oxidized cholesterols. That's powerful. I've shown this to many medical doctors, and they said, wow, you guys are going to own this. And I often wonder why we don't. It's because we need people like you that are listening to go out and start showing us. Here's some more stats, right? These numbers can't even be obtained with many medications or other types of diet modified programs out there. Nobody's doing what we're doing. This is unbelievable. If you don't get excited about that, you're not paying attention. This is changing people's lives for the better. This is how you reverse the problem of metabolic syndrome. This is how you get people back to a lean, mean fighting machine and they're happy and they're healthy and they're productive. So compared to published studies on many different programs, it outperforms anything on the market. We have the studies, here's the science, here's the studies, clinically proven. Come on, you don't need any more information than that. That's just powerful. So in conclusion, it's as simple as helping people use the right products, the right diet. You can use the coach, support, the biotrackers. It's all laid out for you. Why? Because the informed program does exactly what we talked about. It sees what no one else chooses to see. It goes along the Hippocrates natural holistic idea that all things happen in the gut. We start making better decisions on our food choices. One in three people you know are already in metabolic disorder, and two out of three by 2050. And it's as simple as removing, resetting, repair, replenish. And we do that through this program. May your fish tank be as beautiful as it can be. May you all have happy, wonderful looking fish like this. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Jay. Um, that, that was awesome. Um, let's go through a couple of slides. And then for those that want to stick around, we can answer a few more questions. Um, <clears throat> because I know we're right just a little bit past the, the top of the hour. So um, one really exciting thing that we've started here at Nature Sunshine is just to start simple when it comes to your microbiome. So we uh, have this campaign going. It's called Reset Breakfast. Um, so uh, this is really a simple place to start where uh, we can take back breakfast and we can rebalance our microbiome. So it starts just with three easy steps. So you're starting your day with quality protein, so uh, one of our Nature Sunshine shakes, um, and then you're adding probiotic, and then you're helping to accelerate the detoxification with Purify. And uh, we haven't really talked that much about the Purify product in this presentation, but it, it supports really everything that we've talked about today. It's a fantastic product. Yeah, so, very, very, I don't want to interrupt you, but I do want oh, to mention oh, oh, oh. that. I, I do want to mention the Purify product. Uh, that was designed specifically with the microbiome in mind, which has a very good amount of inulin, fructooligosaccharides. It even helps the body by helping the microbes actually help remove heavy metals in the body. That's phenomenal because they're tough to get out. So that's pretty cool. I love the Purified product. I'm a big yeah, fan. <laughs> Great. Yeah, thanks for chiming in on that one. That, that really is a fantastic product. Um, so those are kind of our, our three steps. And we have a really uh, great promotion going where you can actually get Purify for free. So we have um, some Reset Breakfast packs that come with three um, different proteins and a bottle of Inform Probiotic, and then you get a free Purify. So it really is a fantastic deal. That's going now through the end of August. Um, so we just challenge all of you to start uh, really trying to work on your microbiome and breakfast is a great place to start and um, this kit will really help support you to do that. Uh, that's just a picture of our, our team. We are, have taken the challenge here to reset our breakfast. Um, we also have some um, prizes that we're giving away on social media. If you share a picture of you with your shake um, and use the hashtag Reset Breakfast. Um, our grand prize is actually a Blendtec blender, uh, which you can make some really great smoothies with that. All right, so um, 
one other thing I just wanted to mention, if any of you are interested in learning more or um, especially about the INFORM program or maybe interested in becoming a certified INFORM coach, I uh, just suggest that you reach out to your regional sales manager. Uh, we'll leave it up here on this slide just for a moment. Um, jot down their email address or their phone number. Give them a call. Um, these guys are happy to talk to you about what, what it would take to become a certified coach and you can really um, really share the message with lots of people about micro, the microbiome and start uh, helping people really transform their health. So I uh, just suggest all of you to do that, jot that down. And um, I'll come back to this slide. Okay, so I think that was our last one. So um, thank you for joining us today. We really are um, so happy that you took the time to be with us. And thank you to Dr. Jay. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and take a few more questions questions, but those of you that need to, to drop off, feel free to do so. Um, all right, let me just, okay, somebody wants to see if I can make these phone numbers bigger. I'll work on that while we'll have Dr. Jay answer some questions. Um, all right, so this is a question about the Purify product. Can you take Purify and fiber at the same time? Okay, um, yes, uh, however, the Purify itself is a form of a fiber type of product already. So it's to kind of add to what we're currently doing to support the digestive system. But you know the ingredients in the Purify really kind of balance the pH of what's happening to the fish tank and a lot of uh, better absorption also does what's called an activation of detoxification signaling. So it tells those little microbes to help sweep out some garbage, like heavy metals. Um, but, you know, is it uh, the only fiber? No. Purify is an excellent source of fiber. And it may be all you need to really apply. But let's say you have somebody that uh, feels they want to get more fiber. And in my opinion, you can't get enough. Um, yeah, you can add additional fiber supplements. So as an example, I'll just use me. I wake up in the morning every single morning, okay? It's like clockwork. It's automatic. I want to do the best thing for my biome as soon as I wake up. I have a big glass of water. That's how I start my day. Then I make a smoothie, and I use either like a Love and Peas. I use Inform. Uh, I use Nature's Harvest. I use all of them. I like the chocolate. I, you know, I do different ones every day. I usually add like a hemp milk. My favorite plant milk is hemp milk. You can use almond cashew, you can use cow, I don't care. Use whatever you like. Use juice, I don't care. Whatever you like. What I like is hemp milk. It's got the best essential fatty acid and protein profile that I've seen of any plant. I add that, then I take a big handful of blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, cranberries, currants, red currants, black currants. I gather these up through the year and I put them in Ziploc bags and I freeze them. And so when I'm making a smoothie, I grab a handful, whatever fits in my hand, and I throw them in there. Why? Those are your polyphenols. They offset the lectins. I throw those in there. Then I add a little psyllium hull fiber. Why not? Plus, I throw a Purify pack in there. That's me. So you can do whatever you want. So the answer is, yeah, you can do both. My only caution is when you're starting with people that are brand new, haven't used supplementation, haven't used fibers, haven't really done a lot with natural health, go slow because if you give them too much fiber too fast, you'll plug them up. You'll slow them down. Don't do that. Always introduce fibers slowly over time, each day, increasing a little more, a little more, a little more. And I, and I ask them, make sure you let me know if your bowels get sluggish. We may have to assist you, a little gentle move, a little LBS, whatever. Uh, but if you're tolerating it, keep increasing your fibers as you go, but don't do it all at once. That's the best advice I can give you. Yeah, no, that's some really great advice. Um, this question comes from Esther. She says that NSP has a lot of different probiotics. Which ones are good for what? Great question. You guys are really smart. I love it. Okay, I, I don't have time to cover them all, but my favorites are the Bacillus coagulans, the Nutribiome. 
I like the Probiotic 11 and I like the 11 Elevated. I'm going to skip on the other two of the Acidophilus and Bifidophilus at this time because we don't have time to cover that. I cover that in other uh, presentations I've done in the past. Um, you can always go to Nature's Institute and, and see discussions on there in the modules. But Bacillus coagulans, I would write this down, is what you use for acute problems. In other words, let's say you get some bad chicken. Bacillus coagulans is where you should start. Let's say you just want to help somebody who's brand new uh, that's having digestive issues. Bacillus coagulans can be a great place to start. I use it more acutely, but I always keep a bottle of Bacillus coagulans on around my home, wherever I'm traveling, in my suitcase, whenever I go anywhere, because Bacillus coagulans is very, very unique. It's a spore, and it doesn't require refrigeration, so therefore it's a great traveler. And it works on kids, it works on dogs, it works on cats. It doesn't matter. If you're a mammal, you benefit from bacillus coagulants. And what it is, the best analogy I can give you is it's a reset button. It kind of resets the whole biome. Kind of like you power off your computer and turn it back on and it works better. Same thing with bacillus coagulants. That's what I do. So it's great for children who come to you, oh, Mom, my tummy's upset, I don't know what's happening. You know, or I'm thinking bacillus coagulants. In fact, I use it more than I ever do activated charcoal or ginger or other remedies that I've used in the past because it works so fast, so quick. However, it only stays in the body about six days and then it leaves. So it's not a normal part of our flora, but it sure fixes things in a hurry. Probiotic 11 was really designed based upon the most species we should have in the Bacteriodetes column, that purple column I showed you in the beginning of the presentation. So we know that those are very beneficial, very helpful to help repopulate the bowel. Elevated 11 just means that we use a different coating on it, which means more of it releases into the digestive tract, like a time release, uh, better than, at times than the probiotic 11. So therefore, it's a little pricier, but it kind of gets more done. You're fine with just probiotic 11. Uh, if that's what you're using on a daily basis, you're just fine with that. And again, we could talk about this for an hour, but I don't want to take up any more time. So hopefully that helps. Great. Well, I think that's really helpful to understand the difference of those. Um, I'm not sure how much time you have, Jay. There's a ton of questions. Um, a ton? <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few. Um, but uh, maybe we take like two more. Does that yeah, sound two, good? two more. Yep, yep. Okay. And thank yeah. you all of you for that are hanging on because you may yeah, learn something. Um, all right, so um, this question says, can a cleanse help with sugar and carb craving? Uh, indirectly, yes. Uh, meaning that if you're helping to change the environment by making it less toxic, removing uh, waste products and poisons, of course the fish tank's gonna start looking better just by removing thing with a cleanse. But it doesn't really get rid of fat-loving, sugar-loving bacteria. That's done with all of the other things we're doing, like berberin, which is really, really powerful uh, at helping with your insulin levels and denaturing bad bacteria. So having berberin in the program really helps get rid of those more than the cleanse does. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that okay. does make sense. Right, so sometimes okay. you need additional help. A cleanse alone doesn't necessarily get rid of the bacteria that may be causing a lot of this metabolic problem. Um, so you, you still have to do the other things as well. Okay, so, all right, um, let's look here. Um, so there's a question um, for rheumatoid arthritis. Is there a specific inform kit that's better for people than others? No. Or will any of them work? No. I think anytime you're dealing with autoimmune disorders, okay, and rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disorder. Number one, we're not here to replace medications or doctors or diagnose or prescribe or treat. What we're trying to understand today is does the microbiome affect our immune system? The answer was yes. Doesn't matter what your immune problem is. In rheumatoid arthritis, that's an autoimmune. Okay, well, how did you get that way? Well, maybe you've got a lot of endotoxins floating around. So you don't need a different kit. You need the same kit everybody else is using as the metabolic age support kit. That's what I would be doing. However, whenever we're dealing with autoimmune 
We want to go slow, introduce things slowly. We want it to be safe. We don't want to overwhelm them. Take your time. And of course, they should probably make sure that their doctors are okay with them going on this type of, um, you know, protein shake and probiotic supplements. And I've, I've yet to find doctors that are having a problem with that. They do want to know what's in it. And you should be informing your MDs of that and make sure that they're in on the game. Let's integrate it. Okay? Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Well, um, I know there were some other questions, but we'll, we'll be doing another webinar tonight. So if you want to come and listen to it again, um, you're more than welcome to do that. And um, so anyway, we'll go ahead and wrap things up for today. Thank you, Dr. J, for being with thank us. You. And thank you for all of you for taking time um, to be here today. So uh, we will be back again tonight at 7 Mountain Time. So have a great rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs>